Hey cruisers, I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com. Welcome back. We hope everyone is doing well. We have a very, very interesting bit of information to share with you today. Yesterday, MSC Cruises held a press conference and their CEO, Gianni Onorato, I love saying his name by the way, announced in very big news that MSC plans to return to service as early as August 15th. Of course, there's a caveat that won't be happening in the United States. It's two ships that they plan to resume service with in the Mediterranean. However, they have laid out an incredibly detailed plan that we want to share with you today because we believe that some of these measures could be implemented in the United States, both with MSC cruises when they return to service in the U.S. and when the cruise lines that frequent U.S. waters resume cruising here, we think that these things could be very commonly seen. And some of them are brand new. You haven't heard many of these before in other health and safety protocol videos. So please, please, Stay until the end of this video. Listen to everything because you are about to hear about the future of cruising. And if you enjoy this video and we have earned your subscription today, please subscribe, turn on the notifications, and give us a thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. Let's get into the details. Mr. Honorado started the press conference by thanking his team, the crew on all of the, uh, the ships at MSC and just acknowledging how hard everything has been for the last few months at MSC for many industry industries, many companies, and just how it's been such a big sacrifice for everyone. And he acknowledged that their crew has been undergoing a very difficult time. They've been suffering with repatriation and missing their families and all of that. And I really appreciated that he started off with that. He then went on to say that MSC is ready they're ready to restart cruises, to gradually resume operations, but they're waiting the final approval from the Italian government, which is interesting because as we know, the Italian government is delaying a little bit with another cruise line over in the Mediterranean right now, but they've already got the go ahead from the Greek and the Maltese governments to start these cruises off. So they're planning to relaunch service with just two ships, MSC Grandiosa, which is set to sail round trip out of Genoa and will visit Rome, Naples, Palermo, and Malta for seven night cruises. And the second ship would be MSC Magnifica, which will sell out of Bari and visit three Greek ports and Trieste and then return to Bari. But these cruises are not for everyone. If you're from the United States, unfortunately, you can't travel to Europe yet. If you're from Canada, unfortunately, you can't travel to Europe just yet. In fact, these cruises are open only to guests coming from the Schengen countries, which are those 26 countries without border controls between them over in Europe. There's 26 of them. I'll read some of them. Austria, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Estonia, Finland, France, Germany, Greece, Hungary, Iceland, Italy, Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, and the Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. Actually, that was all of them. <laughs> so if you're from any of those countries, you are welcome to go on a cruise in Europe at this point when cruising resumes. So here is how MSC is going to make the cruising process safe for its visitors right up front on these two ships. They are going to do what they say is going beyond the health authority recommendations from Europe and global health authority recommendations because their goal is to create what they call a sanitary bubble for you, the cruiser, for guests and the crew. They anticipate that once cruising resumes, they will eventually be able to extend into other countries as well, like Spain. Right now, Spain isn't allowing people to cruise into their country, but soon they hope that that will happen again. Here's where it gets really interesting, and here's what's going to be required of you, the cruiser, if you're cruising with MSC during this time. MSC will be requiring universal testing for all guests during embarkation. It's very, very clear. They've made it very clear that guests will only per be permitted on the ship once COVID tested. The testing will be done in different ways based on the level of risk and where you've traveled from. Uh, from If you're coming from high risk areas right now, such as Spain, you will have to provide a PCR molecular test that has already been completed 72 hours prior in your home country prior to embarkation. Now, if you're from a lower risk country, you'll be tested in the cruise terminal. So listen up, this is how it's gonna work. They're going to use a mass testing technology, which during the Q&A came out that this will be a, a nasopharyngeal swab test and results will be provided within 30 
minutes. That's right. Cruisers will be testing in the cruise terminal. Results will be provided within 30 minutes. So you'll get to the cruise terminal, you'll go to a medical station, and you'll get a swab test. You'll be, in, you'll be given a swab test. Once tested, you can, per, you can proceed to check-in, but then you will wait at check-in for 60 to 90 minutes before you can be cleared to board that ship because your results won't have come back yet. So they think that from the time you tested to the time you're maybe permitted to board will be about 60 to 90 minutes. Any guest with a positive test or a high temperature will be entirely denied boarding. You will also be required to present a health questionnaire outlining medical and travel history to ensure that you're joining the ship safely. Details on this questionnaire were not discussed. We're assuming it's a questionnaire that they would hand you to talk about your travel history and your medical history, not one that you have to provide from a doctor, but it wasn't exactly clear. Now, you might be wondering about the crew. What's going to be happening with the crew? Will they be tested as well? Yes, indeed, they will. And not only will the crew have to test, but they will have to test three times before going to work for the ship. The first test happens in their home country prior to them flying over to the cruise port. The second test, an immunofluorescence test, happens on arrival at the cruise terminal, just like the guests. And lastly, the crew, once they're on board the ship, will quarantine for five days. And then after that five-day period, they will test for a third time. And then they will be released from their isolation to duty. So this is a third three test plan for the crew. During the cruise season, the crew will also continue to be tested every single month, and the crew will also have their temperature taken daily. Now, the crew will also not always be able to visit shoreside and ports. Their shore visits will be kept to an absolute minimum and will only be permitted as part of an organized tour. So let's talk about what it's going to be like for the passengers who are boarding these ships in Europe. Social distancing will absolutely be required, and guests will be urged to keep one meter distance from one another. They're going to cap guest capacity at 70%. So this, the ship will only be, at first, 70% occupied, which is going to allow for 10 square meters of public space on board per guest. Before, it was seven square meters per guest on MSC. So they're increasing the amount of space that you technically have. Masks will be required whenever social distancing is not possible, and you will find complimentary face masks in your cabin every day, every morning, and around the ship at main venues. They will provide you with the masks. This is very interesting stuff, isn't it? There's so much more to cover, but before we move on, I do want to just stay on the mask topic for just a moment because I know that this is a big concern for a lot of people. The cruise line did state that masks will need to be worn when going to the restaurant, but certainly not while dining. You'll also potentially need to wear a mask during some events and during other high contact periods. And guests will be temperature checked daily and when returning from ports. Again, temperature checks daily. They didn't state exactly when or how that would happen, but they did state that it would. I think one of the most notable announcements that came out during this press release was that passengers on these initial MSC cruises will only be able to be permitted to go ashore as part of an organized tour. So upon booking, guests will be told, look, you can only book an excursion with MSC Cruise Line. We're only doing organized tours, and that is to keep you safe, to keep the port safe, to keep the crew safe, to keep everyone safe. So you might be wondering about costs. Well, as you know, MSC cruises are sold as experiences. So depending on what experience you book into, some of your experiences might include shore excursions. For those guests who are booking the Bella experience, the lower level one, they'll be given one complimentary excursion. Fantastic guests will get two. Aria will get three. And Yacht Club guests will have all excursions included. Now you can upgrade your excursion. You can buy more. Or you can purchase a package of uh, three excursions for 100 euro as well. So let's talk about life on board the cruise ship and what it's going to be like. There's going to be, of course, increased cleaning in cabins. They have over 100 hand sanitizing stations placed all throughout the ship. And guests are going to be reminded constantly about good sanitation practices. Stay with me. I know this is long, but this is all really important stuff. You're going to like this one. MSC will provide 100% fresh air to cabins and public areas. That's right. They're going to not be recirculating air anymore because we've learned this virus can spread through particles in the air, right? So they're trying to minimize that with 100% fresh air. They're also going to use ultraviolet light technology in public areas and cabins for sanitizing, and they're going to use that technology in the medical centers. Guests will no longer 
have the need to visit the front desk. They are going virtual, guys. Virtual assistance from the front desk staff will be available to you 24 seven. You just have to pick up the phone. They're gonna reduce some guest activities down to about 50% where appropriate. And the same thing is gonna happen in show lounges. You're gonna find capacity at around 50%. Guests will not be allowed to sit next to each other unless they're traveling together and there will be more shows. The spa is gonna be modified for a bit. The sauna and the Turkish bath activities will not be permitted at first, but you can go to the pool. So that's nice. Sun loungers in the pool areas will be sanitized constantly and because of the reduced capacity, you'll have more choices of places to sit. You might be wondering if you can swim, and right now they're saying you can, that pools and slides will be available to you but with capacity limits. So. For example, a 50 square meter pool can only uh, be allowed to hold 12 people at a time per social distancing guidelines, so they're gonna have to monitor that. Let's talk about food service for a minute. At their buffet type restaurants, you're not gonna be able to serve yourself. The staff is going to serve you. You get to choose your items and they'll serve it to you. In the dining room, you're gonna be spaced out and away from other people for social distancing reasons. And in the main dining room, your menu will be completely digital. You'll be using a QR code just like we are on land at restaurants right now, right? Pull up your phone, take a picture of the QR code on your table, and you've got your menu right in front of you. But if you're traveling with a group, larger tables will be provided for you, and you should be able to dine with your group. So what happens if someone falls ill? This is what everyone's wondering. What's going to happen? How is this going to be different? Are we going to be stuck on a ship? And the answer is no. They assure us that you are not going to be left on a ship if you become ill. They've got Medical staff has received new training. They have a new health protocol compliance position on board, and the medical center will be open 24-7 and have lots of testing available. If you have symptoms of any kind and you're cruising on one of these ships, you will be able to contact the medical center immediately for an assessment free of charge. That's an important detail. They're also going to be keeping 10% of guest cabins vacant uh, for isolation in case that becomes necessary for what they call suspect cases or cases in case that is necessary. And they're going to be in constant communication with shoreside facilities that can house people who have tested positive. Of course, if you don't need to go to a hospital, maybe you're, you don't have symptoms but you tested positive, they're going to have an arrangement with a shoreside facility to take you to. If you have no symptoms, you can also be sent home. You might be wondering how all of this is gonna be paid for. What if something happens and you need to make your way home? Well, they're gonna have a new product. It's a new pandemic insurance that's coming out that every guest can purchase to comprehensive cover, comprehensively cover you and your party if you become ill and you cannot cruise. The insurance will cover a guest refund if you're denied boarding, and if you're diagnosed positive, the insurance will cover your transportation home. If you are a suspect case in the middle of your cruise, the remaining part of your cruise will also be fully refunded to you using the insurance. I want to I want to reemphasize one more time though that they said very very clearly when asked that they will not be quarantining people on board in the event of an outbreak. I think we learned that with Diamond Princess scientifically that is a terrible idea. We need to get people off the ship. We need to get them treated, right? So I want to clarify that. Another innovation. This is a crazy one you guys. They're going to have proximity and contact tracing bracelets that everyone will wear. Every guest, all of the crew will be required to wear tracking bracelets. So if someone falls ill, the cruise line can literally find out who you came into contact or proximity with, contact them and begin their contact tracing process. That is very, very innovative. You might be wondering about your data. Your data will be destroyed after 14 days after the cruise. So it's not gonna be living anywhere. Whew. So will these crews Measures last forever. Will we have to cruise this way for the rest of our career? Will this, <laughs> our cruising career, will these changes come to the United States? The truth is we don't know. Um, MSC did acknowledge that this is a very dynamic situation. It's very likely that things will relax and they will change. Do you think MSC is going to start cruising again in the United States? Mr. Honorado sounded mildly optimistic. He said, we are not, we are at a different level in terms of the evolution of the pandemic between Europe and the U.S. So he kind of expressed some hope that U.S. operations could resume soon and that this European resumption would provide a learning opportunity. So... What do you think about all this, everyone? It's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot to absorb. This isn't cruising as we know it, but I think we all have to understand that it is very possibly cruising as it will be in the future for just the next little bit when cruising does resume. 
Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if we've earned your subscription today, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, leave us a comment below. Let us know what you think about all of this. And thanks for sitting through the whole episode if you are still here. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas.